Hi, this is Jason with the WP GraphQL. I'm going to be showing some examples of writing queries against the WP GraphQL schema. I'm um, using the tool called Graphical, uh, and I've got the WP GraphQL plugin set up and installed on a local WordPress install. If you don't have WP GraphQL plugin installed and activated, uh, check out the wpgraphql.com slash learn, and uh, we'll have details on that there. And again, for these dev tools, if you don't have the graphical dev tools, also check out wpgraphql.com slash learn, and we'll have details on that there. Um, so let me show you. Uh, you can open the, in the dev tools a uh, documentation explorer, which will show the schema. Here's all the uh, default stuff that's available in the graph WP GraphQL schema. Um, so one thing that looks interesting to me is posts. Uh, let me just show you the WordPress install I'm working with. Um, it's a very fresh in install. I've got the hello world post. So let's write a post query to get that. Okay. So as I start typing in the dev tools, it knows what I can and can't do because it knows what my schema is. So I'm going to do posts. Uh, and the shape of this query uh, uses the relay specification, um, which will also have details on wpgraphql.com slash learn. Um, so you can understand why the shape of this looks the way it does. Um, but now I can query for a list of posts and I can ask for specific details of a post, such as maybe the ID, the date, the title, um, what else might we want, a slug and a link. Okay, So I can run this query by pressing this play button, right, and it's going to go uh, get me the data that I asked for. Um, so that's pretty handy. And it's actually coming back in the shape that I asked for. So let's go look at pages. I have one page in here, sample page. Um, I can write in the same query, I've asked for pages, oops, or sorry, I've asked for posts, let's also ask for a list of pages, and maybe on pages we want also maybe the ID, the link, the title, uh, maybe we want the modified date here, and maybe the content, okay? So we can run that here, and you'll see... Uh, I've run one query, but for two different types of data in WordPress and two different shapes of data. Um, for posts, I've asked for a specific shape of data. For pages, I've asked for a different shape of data. And I'm getting it back in the same way that I've requested it. If for some reason order mattered, I can even change the order that I'm requesting stuff in, and I get it back in the order that I've requested it. Another handy thing with WP, uh, or sorry, with GraphQL queries is aliasing. So let's say posts, maybe in my client system, we call it articles. So I can run that, and when it comes back, it's called articles here. Maybe pages, I, uh, what else would you call pages? I don't know. Content, I don't know. Something crazy like that. But when you run it, uh, it comes back in the shape that you asked for it in, uh, which is very, very cool. Um, so we've looked... We've looked at some pretty simple, what I would consider pretty simple queries. Um, so let's look at some uh, a little bit more advanced where we're asking for related data. So let's come in here to uh, posts and let's go ahead and quick edit this. We'll put it in the category GraphQL. Um, and what else? Yeah, that's fine. We'll put it in the category GraphQL. Um, oh, wait, can I tag? For, yeah, so let's tag uh, GraphQL is awesome. Sweet. So now we've got this Hello World post. It's in the GraphQL category, and it's tagged with GraphQL. It's awesome. So now I can run on this uh, post query. I can ask for categories, edges, and node. And I can ask for, let's see, name. So now I can get it asked for a list of categories with the ID, link, slug, and name. So I'm going to get a list of posts, in this case, Hello World and then a list of the categories it's attached to. So in this case, it's GraphQL, since I just tagged it with that. I'm getting the slug, the name, the link. Um, I can do the same with tags. So I want the post tags. Maybe I want the ID, link, and name. So I can run that again, and now I get a list of the tags and posts. So this is actually pretty sweet. What if for some reason I also wanted a list of posts that are in that category? 
body. So I can rerun this. Now we're getting a list of posts, each post, and we're getting a list of the post categories. Inside the category, we're asking for the ID link, name, slug, and then a list of posts in that category. So we asked for the Hello World post. We got it. We asked for the categories. We got it. And now we're getting posts in that category. So it's really cool the shape of uh, queries we can build in here. It's relatively easy, relatively fast. Um, the aliasing is really nice. Categories, maybe we call it, um, I don't know, cats. I don't know. Whatever you want to call it in your system, and it comes back the way that you want it to be called. Um, so it's really, really, really powerful stuff. Um, I can query for multiple types of data. I can also enter wherever I want. So maybe I want to enter at categories instead of at posts. I can ask for categories, edges, node, ID, posts, edges, node, ID, title, link, name. Okay, so now I can run this query. We're gonna get a list of the categories. In my case, the categories that I have are GraphQL, and inside that, the GraphQL category is connected to the post, hello world, right? So I can enter through categories, I can enter through pages, I can enter through posts, I can enter kind of wherever I want because everything in a graph um, is, is an entry point, right? And then one thing that's really sweet, I can take the ID and it's a globally unique ID. So I can write what's called a node query. Node is gonna ask for an argument. The argument it's gonna ask for is ID. I can run that. Oops, sorry. And then I can just ask for the type name back. Let's see, just to see it's working. So I took this category ID, I ran a node query, and I asked for the type name back. It's telling me it's a category. Let's take an ID from a page. So we did this page down here. Let's do that here. And same thing, it's telling me it knows that it's a page. So that's super powerful because then I can do something like this. I can say, hey GraphQL, take that ID. If the, if the type comes back a page, give me a link, a slug, and the ID, and I don't know, the date. If the type comes back a po or uh, let's say category, Give me the name, the ID, the link, and maybe the description. So, so depending on what ID I pass it, in this case I'm passing it a page, so I should get this data back. I'm gonna copy this category ID for later. So let's run this. Wow, I passed the ID, I'm getting back the type name page, and I'm getting back the, the data that I asked for in the shape for a page. But if I paste in the category ID and run the same query, this node is going to give me different shape because I asked for a different shape based on the type of data. So if this ID matches the type of a category, give me the name, ID, link, and description. So this becomes incredibly powerful for client-side applications that uh, use the API to fetch data. They can fetch a list of data, take this globally unique ID, then when just one node of data changes, they can refetch data for just that node, and it doesn't matter what type of data it is, they can just run a node query and define the shape of data they want based on the type that returns. So this is just an intro to uh, queries. Uh, I hope you're excited to use WP GraphQL. Uh, I know I am, and I look forward to uh, hearing more about uh, projects you guys are working on and keep it on wpgraphql.com. Thanks.